Judas begot Pharez and Zara of Pharma. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. I thought to you that I thought that I would speak to you this evening about the Gospel of Our Lady's Nativity. The genealogy of Christ, which is traced both by St. Luke and by St. Matthew, begins, St. Jerome says, with carnal things that by learning of our Lord's manhood, we may go on to learn of his Godhead. Now, the many times that most of you have followed this Gospel in your Missal, you've probably wondered what to make of it. And you thought to yourself, well, there isn't too much here for thought or, or meditation. It's just a, a legal genealogy whereby the evangelists uh, give the, uh, the descent of our blessed Savior, proving that he is as a legal son of St. Joseph and uh, uh, an heir of David the King. And uh, it is interesting to note what the uh, fathers of the church and the mystics have to say about how the genealogy of actually St. Joseph refers in a very large measure, of course, to our Blessed Mother as well. But it's not that about which I want to speak to you, but I, I thought I would speak to you about something in connection with the Fatima message. We often say the message of Fatima is simply that of the Gospel, correct? That is to say, conversion, hope, hope still for humanity, and hope for individual souls. That is so true, and you see it in this Gospel. There's not a word that's wasted in sacred scripture or in the beautiful, inspired Roman Missal of the Mass. Everything has some inspiration to offer us. Saint uh, Jerome tells us, very interestingly, this struck me as I was reading his, his sermon in the Divine Office of Matins for the Blessed Mother's Feast Day on Friday for her birthday. Saint Jerome says that in the genealogy of our Savior, no holy women are named, but rather those whom the scriptures reprehend. In other words, the only women mentioned by name as ancestors of our Lord are sinful women. Isn't that interesting? What kind of a lesson might there be for us in that? St. Jerome goes on to draw the first lesson from that so that he who came for the sake of sinners, being born of sinners, would destroy the sins of all. In other words, in St. Matthew, by mentioning by name just a few women, and all of them, their histories known as having been pagans or sinners otherwise, remind us that our Lord came to bring the true faith to the pagans, as well as to the Jews, and to destroy sin. And that must be our job still today as Christians, isn't it? By heeding our Blessed Lady's message, wa uh, waging war on sin and darkness with a very powerful uh, weapon of the rosary, of penance, of prayer, of devotion to the Immaculate Heart, we are still trying to do that today to destroy the sins of all. Our Blessed Savior did it at redemption, and we, by applying the fruits of the redemption, to difficult situations in our time and individual souls are still carrying that out today. We wouldn't be having these devotions, these processions, and these prayers unless we had hope. Hope for fallen humanity. Hope. Hope for peace. Unless we had hope. Hope for the restoration of Holy Mother Church and for the salvation of countless souls who hang today at this hour in the balance between heaven and hell. Sometimes we forget that truth, don't we? We act as though prayers were never heard, and we pray almost out of habit. We must never forget the wonderful hope of the gospel, which our Blessed Mother at Fatima gives us from her heart, from her immaculate heart, for each one of us and each one of the intentions of our prayer to see the power of grace, that God's grace, you read it in the genealogy, makes of women who were pagans. And in the case of Tamar, if I'm not mistaken, 
she was a prostitute. But because she showed the Canaanite spy, the Hebrew spies in the land of Canaan, a place of safe hiding and saved their lives, Almighty God forgave for her sins. And she was worthy to be an ancestress of David and thus of our blessed Savior himself. Do you see then how God's grace works, has worked in the past and is still working today? Perhaps the most striking example of the mercies of our Lord, how our Lord is all the time putting our sins behind us and behind him, is the case of Bathsheba, the wife of Urias. King David had an adulterous union with her, and then for the sake of having this woman, who was not his wife, killed the brave soldier Urias. But then out of that union was born Solomon, the great symbol and king of wisdom, an ancestor of our Lord. So the women mentioned are each one of them with their own little story of being either pagans or sinners or both. And yet each one of them is a step in the genealogy of our Savior because we are never to be without hope because we must always remember the power of prayer and of grace to change people and change things. That was won for us by our Savior on Calvary applied at this Holy Mass tonight and then by the continuation of our prayers in this public procession to so many people and to so many needs. How hopeful we should be. And if we spread the message of Fatima, it isn't one of doom and gloom, nor is it one of trying to um, force God to do our will. No, it is the gospel in the dark, dark days in which we live, all sweetly summarized in those words of the Blessed Mother and the pages of it in the beads of our rosaries, well prayed and meditated. Last of all, it occurred to me, I think that the reason why the only women given in the genealogy of our Lord and thus of Our Lady are sinners to make the Blessed Mother Immaculate stand out by contrast. Here are all of these sinful women and then comes Anne, whose name means grace, and then her daughter, Mary Immaculate, whom no shadow or stain of sin ever touched. Truly, as we continue to celebrate our Blessed Mother's birthday, our hearts should be filled with joy. You see the contrast between sinful mankind and the sinless one who brings the Redeemer who does away with mankind's sins. The beauty of God's plan, we're still living it now. Let us take hope and never, ever give up our prayers or our belief in the power of God's grace to take something which is very evil and to turn it instead into something which is incredibly good. Just the power of grace. Hail Mary full of grace. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.